Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today what we are going to do is talk about some of the units of concentration, mainly focusing on molarity because that's the most important one, but we'll touch on some other ones like molality, which you may never use, and mass percent, which you will probably run into out in the real world um, because people don't understand moles. Uh, but before we go to that, let's review some terminology about solution strength. Right, the, the idea of concentrated is sort of arbitrary. You know, what, what you think is concentrated and what someone else thinks is concentrated is open to opinion. You know, you might think your orange juice is concentrated and when other people drink it, even more concentrated than that. You know, so, but it really kind of refers to the idea of how much stuff is in there. So concentrated tends to have large amounts of solute, but, but what is large is open to opinion. And again, dilutes just the opposite, less. All right, so we'll quantify that a little later when we get to molarity. Um, but the terms unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated, I think we've touched on before, but if you haven't, the idea is unsaturated is it can still dissolve more solute at a given temperature. Remember, it's all dependent on temperature. Saturated, it means it's, uh, it's dissolved as much as it can. And then supersaturated is, for some reason, it's holding more than it normally should, usually due to temperature changes. All right. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, and again, this would be a whole lesson in its own right, this, the solubility of solids tends to increase with increasing temperature, uh, generally speaking, and the solubility of gases tends to actually decrease with increasing temperature as those gas molecules bounce around in there. Um, so again, a good rule of thumb, but certainly uh, open to more uh, in-depth conversation later. And so our friends are back here. A little witty banter here. So quantitative ways of measuring stuff. Uh, there, there are lots of them out there, pl plenty. Um, but I, th I think the uh, really, really focusing the lion's share on molarity. Uh, but we could talk a little bit about mass percent and molality too while we're at it in this video. But really, you know, if, if all you knew was molarity, you'd probably be in pretty good shape. Uh, molarity is a really beautiful unit because what it does is it, cons it considers the moles of solute per liter. All right, and that's, you know, just think of all the importance for stoichiometry right there. If you know how many moles of something you have in your solution, then you can jump right into stoichiometry. And that's the really, really important thing about molarity. That's why it exists. All right, so let's say that we have 50 grams of sodium hydroxide dissolved in uh, 0.5 liters of water. What's the molarity? Well, uh, it, it, go ahead, take a stab at that if you'd like to. I'll wait for you. Hey, hey, welcome back. All right, so what did we get there? All right, well, we know that we have 50 grams. We know our volume is 0.5 liters. We're looking for molarity, which is moles per liter. Now, sometimes you'll see the unit for molarity be the capital M, uh, but people are trying to get away from that uh, just because there's a lot of M's floating around anyway. So you're better off just writing out moles per liter, M-O-L slash L. Um, and uh, uh, we will need the molar mass of sodium hydroxide if we're going to go from grams to moles. Um, again, you should show the work for that. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the work for sake of time and space here. And so if we have 50 grams of sodium hydroxide, it would make sense that if it's 40 grams per mole, we have a little over one mole of sodium hydroxide. And so you take those moles of sodium hydroxide and you simply divide it by your volume. And since we, you know, if we had one liter, it would be 1.25 moles per liter. But since we only have half a liter, it becomes uh, double that. The concentration is now 2.50 moles per liter sodium hydroxide. That's that, it's that easy. You just figure out how many moles you have and you divide it by your volume. You don't need one liter to figure out molarity. It's just if you have one liter, then it's the number of moles. So let's look at another example and play with this a little bit. So how many total ions are present in 800 milliliters of 0.25 molar calcium chloride? All right, so now, now we have to take it a little farther. Um, so again, uh, there's the relevant information. Again, pause the video if you want to try this out for yourself first. Uh, I'm going to get my volume to liters just so it matches up with my units for molarity. Um, now, we know that molarity is amount over volume. So if I solve for n, n equals uh, molarity times volume. Um, that is an extremely important equation right there. Take note of that. N equals concentration times volume. Because when you multiply those together, what you're going to get are the moles, right? If you take moles per liter and multiply it by liters, the liters cancels out and we get moles. 
And so you're going to see this happen a lot, that we're going to multiply the concentration by the volume, because that leaves us with moles. And once we have moles, uh, we can do anything we want in chemistry. And so that's why this is really important. Uh, for instance, you know, t technically we can stop the problem there, but they're asking us for how many uh, ions. Well, it's, this is just some fun factor label. Uh, we'll take the moles of calcium chloride. We know that for every one mole of calcium chloride, it breaks up into three moles of ions, right? One mole of calcium and two moles of chloride, all right? And then we know that one mole of ions would be Avogadro's number of ions. So that's a nice review problem for those of you starting to get ready for finals out there. Uh, that checks off a couple boxes there of understanding how many ions comes out of a compound and understanding the relationship between moles and ions, which is nice. And so what we'll do for the rest of the video is we'll just touch on a couple of the other units that you might run into. But you, you, you could go a, a, a very far distance in chemistry without having to uh, know about the other units. Uh, mass percent is really probably more used for the layperson, the non-chemist, because the, the non-chemist doesn't really understand moles. So when you tell somebody you have a two molar solution of hydrogen uh, peroxide, they, they really don't understand that. But if you tell them what percent of their solution is the substance by mass, they, they get that better because a higher number is going to be a higher concentration. Something that's 100% by mass is, is, is pure. And so the mass percent um, is not that hard to figure out. You just take the mass of your solute, and then it's the total mass, which is the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. Very easy to calculate, just very hard to back calculate or use anything for chemistry. Uh, it's, it's very, very, uh, it's, it's a pain in the butt to go back the other way, you know, to go from a mass percent to figuring out how many moles you actually have. So as a chemist, you may never use mass percent, but as a non-chemist, you might use it quite a lot. All right. So anyway, so let's take a look at this. We'll take the same information and play with this. Um, I have a density of water. Remember, the density of water could change at different temperatures, but we'll keep it simple here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how many uh, milliliters of water I have, 500 milliliters. And from there then, I'm going to use my density equation. I'm going to solve for mass. Mass equals density times volume. And so I'm going to get my mass of water. And again, that's a great review if you have a final coming up in one of your classes. You're just playing with density a little bit there. So, uh, you know, half a liter of water would be 500 grams of water. And again, that makes sense if it's one gram per milliliter. And now that I have that, I can figure out my mass percent. It's going to be 50 over 50 plus 500 because uh, the total mass is the mass of the solute plus the solvent. And so I end up with a uh, mass percent of about 9.1%. Uh, and so again, for the non-chemist, you know, something's 18%. Uh, they're like, oh, that's a higher concentration. That makes sense. You know, so th that's why you might see this out there. Um, lastly is another unit you may never run into, and that's the idea of molality, you know, so um, not molarity, easily confused. Notice that it's a lowercase m. So they got a little song going here. So molarity and molality uh, are actually different. Now sometimes the numbers end up being quite similar, um, but it's the moles of solute not per liter but per kilogram of solvent. Um, now, why would you care about this? Well, because volume can change. You know, we talked about the density of water at different temperatures. The, the, actually, the density of water can change. Uh, and so, hence, the volume could change. And so, if you're really concerned about uh, tiny changes in your concentration, then you don't want to use mol uh, molarity because, again, water can expand and contract, and you're, actually, your concentration can change a little bit. All right? Um, and there are some other advantages of molality, too. First off, all you need is good balance. That's it. I mean, you know, because you're going to measure the mass of the solute um, uh, and then convert that to moles, and then you're going to use the mass of the solvent. And also, that means that you can convert the mass of the solvent to moles of solvent if you have to. And the reason you might do that is if you have a reactive solvent. Uh, most of our uh, so solvents are non-reactive, so we don't really care. But if you have a reactive solvent, uh, then you'll want to know how many moles of solvent you have, and that's, that way molality really comes into play. It's also useful for colligative properties when you're trying to figure out the number of particles of solute versus solvent. So there are some reasons to use molality, um, but for the typical first-year chem student, you probably don't run into it very often. But let's, let's see what we can do here. Let's try out a molality problem here. Again, the same sort of information. What's the molality of NaOH given the density of water at that temperature? And you can do a little fun factor label there. I did it for you that one gram per milliliter ends up being one kilogram per liter. With that in mind, uh, moles per kilogram isn't that hard to figure out. Again, I'm going to use uh, my uh, density to figure out mass. Um, 
So I have 0.5 kilograms of H2O, which shouldn't be a surprise because before it was 0.5 liters. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grams and I'm going to convert it to moles. Again, I still have 1.25 moles of sodium hydroxide. That isn't a surprise. And then uh, mol molality then would be moles of sodium hydroxide over the uh, mass of solvent, which would be 2.5 moles per kilogram, which is almost the same as moles per liter, uh, which again sh should make sense because uh, the mass and volume of waters is essentially a one-to-one -one ratio. So anyway, you may never use molality, but there it was. I, I would definitely focus the lion's share of your attention on molarity. Okay. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say about units of concentration. That's more than enough uh, to get you started. So thanks for watching and have a great day.